So Capcom just released the first big update for Dragon's Dogma 2, and this update applies to PlayStation users and also Steam PC users. Xbox players, you're gonna have to wait a few more days, but you should be getting what the PlayStation users are getting. I will be showing you guys some of these updates in actual games so you can see it for yourself. But here we go, Dragon's Dogma 2 title update 329 2024. So the update for PS5 and Steam together, the first thing that was added was the option to start a new game when save data already exists. I cannot believe that they did not include this on launch. Clearly it didn't take them that long to add it into the game because we're only a week, a week and a half after the initial launch. Huge mistake, in my opinion. They could have avoided so much backlash just by having this on day one. But let's check it out. And there you have it, folks. The new game option right below load from last in rest. And this option was not here when the game launched. Now, be very careful. Do not mistake this for starting another character. You still cannot have multiple characters on a single account. That's a topic for a different day, but you can actually start an entirely new game, which erases your current save data. If I click on new game right here, you can see that you have a warning here that pops up. Starting a new game will erase your previous save data. Then it asks you to proceed. So be very careful clicking on this and just know that you are going to lose your current save data unless you know of a way of backing it up. Up next, changing the number of Art of Metamorphosis items available at the Pawn Guild in the game to 99 so the reason why capcom is doing this is because the art of metamorphosis is a book that you can grab that allows you to change your character's appearance and your main pawn's appearance and they were selling one of these art of metamorphosis in the actual cash shop for the game which of course created a lot of controversy you could only buy one now just to make sure that we have this clear because there was a lot of misinformation going on about the cash shop you could already buy a couple of these in game with rift crystals at the pawn guild and there also is a barber in the game that you could visit with your character to change their appearance for in-game gold. Now, that doesn't mean you can't criticize the cash shop for having this item just because you could already buy it in-game. I'm all for criticism of microtransactions, especially in full-price single-player RPGs, but you could already get this item in-game, and now that Capcom is offering you the ability to buy 99 of them from the Pawn Guild. So if we go to buy right here and I scroll down, Art of Metamorphosis, it should be right here somewhere. There it is right there. I can buy a total of 99 of them for 49,500 Rift Crystals. This makes this particular purchase in the cash shop even more pointless, I guess you could say. But in that case, why not just take it out of the cash shop? That would really solve the problem here. But they, they lessen the blow, I guess you could say. And for those of you who may be unaware, you don't even need the Art of Metamorphosis. If you talk to a barber in town, you can see right here that you can pay in-game gold right here to change the appearance of your Risen and or your main pawn. Up next for PS5 and Steam, making the quest that allows players to acquire their own dwelling where they can save and rest available earlier in the game. So I'm happy that they did this because now when you arrive at Vernworth, you're probably gonna meet this NPC if you just explore the city a little bit, who's gonna talk to you. And if you do her quest and help her out, you have the opportunity to purchase her home and therefore you don't have to pay money to rest at the inn. Now, the real good thing about this, apart from just being able to get your home earlier, which will save you money resting at the inns, is that when you do rest at your house in this game, it counts as an inn save. So in this game, there's auto saves and manual saves, which are a separate save file from resting at an inn or resting at your home and now that most players will get their home earlier in the game this is going to give them way more opportunities to get that in save checkpoint therefore making it less risky that they'll lose a ton of in-game time by accidentally loading in at an in save which might have been hours ago in the past before they actually owned a home and were able to rest as much as they wanted then we have some miscellaneous text display issues and miscellaneous bug fixes there hasn't really been that many bugs as i've been playing this game but it seems like they've fixed a few of them that players have been running into now jumping down to the steam section so this is only for steam and not playstation 5 and then we'll talk about playstation 5 specifically improving quality when dlss super resolution is enabled if you have an nvidia graphics card and if you don't know what gpu that you have just do a quick google search and ask how to find out what gpu i have and you'll be able to figure that out really quickly but if you have an nvidia graphics card if you go into the game's options and go to graphics and then scroll down to dlss super resolution this is something that you're going to want to turn on if you have an nvidia graphics card if you don't have an nvidia gpu you might be looking into running the fidelity fx super resolution this works with a lot of amd cards you just got to do a quick google search to see if your gpu is compatible compatible with uh, either of these now it's important to note that it said 
DLSS quality has been improved. So this isn't necessarily focused on performance with DLSS on, but when you enable DLSS, you'll notice that the graphics or the visuals of your game get a little bit worse, but it's supposed to, in theory, make your game run much smoother. Obviously, performance has been a big problem with this game, and I'm not really noticing any improvements to my FPS with this patch update. Um, and I can't really tell if it really even looks that much better. But do note at the bottom of this update, Capcom says these options won't affect frame rate significantly. Improvements to frame rate are planned for future updates. So let's get rolling on those Capcom and try to get the performance of this game under control. I know that they were having some CPU problems with the NPCs rendering and things like that. But regardless, we just need more performance updates for, I would say, everybody. The other Steam-specific update is fixed an issue related to the display of models under some specific settings. And then for PS5-specific updates, we have adding the option to switch motion blur on and off in the options. I don't know why this wasn't just in at the launch of the game. So many players don't like motion blur, so this should have just been a setting that you could tinker with right away, and it would have avoided some backlash. Not to mention, motion blur seems to make some players a little bit sick, so what a bad way to start off your DD2 experience, but now PS5, you guys have the option to do that. Adding the option to switch ray tracing on and off in the options. So if you turn off ray tracing, it should improve your performance. Although, like I said, this game has been having some CPU problems outside of just GPU, and I'm not exactly sure how much ray tracing will make a difference until they solve that. But definitely turn that off if you want to try to have better performance. Ray tracing does uh, make the lighting pretty crazy in games. So switch that off if you're really not liking your performance. And also adding the option to set frame rate at max 30 FPS and options for PS5 players so if you don't like the game kind of going from 25 fps up to 40 fps where it's a little bit smoother than dropping back down to 30 then dropping down to 25 or dropping down to 20 if that inconsistency feels weird to you it does for some players you can just set it at max 30 fps it's never going to go higher than that you're going to have more of a consistent experience but you won't go any higher than 30, so you're never going to experience the smoother parts of the game, but that might be better for some players. And also at the bottom, it says updates to Xbox Series X and S are planned in the next few days, so you guys should be getting that very soon. And that'll be it for the first big update for Dragon's Dogma 2. Please keep them coming, Capcom. I'm really upset at how they launched the game because I really do think that this game is a gem. I am having so much fun, and I think it has a chance of becoming one of my favorite games, at least over the past decade or so. A lot of systems in this game I really just vibe with. I think the open world design and the exploration is top-notch, some of the best out there. The pawn system is extremely unique, and the combat is probably the best action RPG combat that I've ever experienced, and I had similar feelings about DD1 in regards to the combat as well. So it's a shame to see it launch in such a rough state when a lot of this could have been avoidable if they just took more time and didn't mess with the cash shop stuff. This could have been a game that we all celebrate the launch and we're all so happy to talk about it, etc. But now there's a lot of negativity surrounding it, and I completely understand why. I'll catch you guys in the next one.